To understand how the Pennsylvania became the world's most powerful killing machine, we must travel back in time. Our journey begins in 1776 with the world's first war submarine, a hollow wooden sphere with a limited supply of air. At the height of the American War of Independence, the Americans found themselves at a severe disadvantage. Their warships were no match for the might of the British Navy. They hatched a plan that relied on guile rather than brute force. Their scheme required a new kind of vessel, one that allowed a man to carry a bomb underwater. Man and bomb had to remain hidden until they reached the British battleship. Once there, the man had to plant the bomb and escape. He had to do it all without coming up for air. The American engineers built their craft from two hollowed out pieces of solid oak. Just like a barrel, they used iron hoops to hold the two halves together and sealed the join with tar to keep the water out. A tank sat below the operator. When he pumped it full of seawater, the craft sank. Hidden underwater, the operator sat in his own bubble of air. It was the world's first war submarine. They called it the Turtle. Jaunty Powis has commanded a nuclear-powered submarine for the Royal Navy and he's about to climb aboard its pedal-powered forebear. Well, what we have here is a reproduction of the USS Turtle. So let's give it a go. Wow! It is very, very cramped inside and so little air the chap's got to propel it by his own muscle power, uh, both up and down, and by using these foot pedals. I mean, never mind the noise it makes, it's just physically exhausting. Tiny window to look through. It's going to be dark outside because it's night. He's got pumps to operate. Goodness only knows how long it took to propel this thing anywhere, but I've been in it for two minutes and already I'm thinking I really want to get out. On the night of the attack, engineers attached a bomb to the turtle's back. They tied the bomb to a drill head that could be driven into the hull of the enemy ship. But when the operator reached his target, he found that the underside of the British ship was lined with copper sheeting. Try as he might, the drill was unable to pierce it, and he couldn't attach the bomb. No one really knows how long the operator could have survived underwater re-breathing the same air before being forced to abandon his mission. To try to find out, we've set up an experiment using a sealed box containing the same volume of air as the turtle. We're going to get sealed in there, do some exercise and see how long you can keep going without feeling too, too funny. Let's, let's, let's have a go. Let's get you... Here. Physiologist Dr. Kevin Fong is an expert on how the body performs under extreme conditions. A little bit sealed off here. There you go. Brilliant. Let's get you starting pedaling now and let's see how, how you go. After 25 minutes, the oxygen in the box begins to run out. 
our volunteer's lungs start to burn and his speech becomes slurred. Um, you can feel it's harder to breathe. Yeah. Much shorter, shorter of a, shorter of oxygen. The man in the turtle must have been suffering from similar symptoms. His brain, starved of oxygen, would have begun to shut down. Within minutes, he would have lost consciousness. Enough of that. Oh, that's refreshing. <laughs> All right, well done, Matt. Fantastic. How are you feeling? I was out of breath. It was getting pretty hot in there. It was sweaty. It was short of air. It was um, good to be in fresh air. Dr. Fong's test exposes a major limitation of the turtle. It quickly runs out of air. So how do the crew of the USS Pennsylvania survive underwater? <laughs> <laughs> 